Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Is that insincere? It's a bit insincere, wasn't it? Happy New Year, everybody. We um, we haven't done a video where it's just sort of us two for like ages. It feels like it feels like quite a while. We had the golden bean, the Christmas one. We had well mm-hmm. prior to that, we had Snowman Bar Dundee Action Man. Yes. Then we had Christmas Beanus. Then we had Anthony here. Yes, but you were yourself for that one. Yeah, but we had Anthony here. We haven't done one which just you and I for ages. I know. And if you remember, we had planned to do a New Year's Eve special where we did a Q&A. Mm-hmm. So we're doing it now in early January. <laughs> <laughs> early January. Early to mid-January. I'm not even going to faff because we've got quite a lot of questions. I have think okay. this is not going to be one of our all seeing all dancing videos but as we go through it we will probably talk a bit about plans for this year and what's happening on the channel um if you like this is sort of a warm-up for going forwards because next week will be a bit more of a all singing all dancing video whereas this is just us sitting chatting in a chilled sort of way don't expect any of those funny edits in this one Dan O'Connor asks, Dan stroke Des O'Connor asks, I'm going to give everyone a name. Okay. Because uh, that's a bit of fun, isn't it? Uh, post-dated question for when you record. Are you having a lovely Christmas? No, Dan, it's it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's not Christmas anymore. Why do you ask that stupid question? Did we have a lovely Christmas? Um, we didn't have a lovely run up to Christmas. It was um, stressful and sad because we had a bereavement in the family. Uh so that was rubbish and then obviously uh, Omicron was floating around and mm-hmm. one of our kids got Omicron the week before Christmas and she spent the entirety of Christmas in her room mm-hmm. uh, literally the day after Boxing Day she was able to leave her room yeah and then uh, we kind of play games with her on FaceTime and yeah all the rest of it she was... joined us by screen but it did mean that my mum and dad couldn't come for Christmas dinner and my kids did end up coming in the end but they didn't come on Christmas day on a yeah my brother was meant to come from Germany and he had to cancel his flight so uh, did we have a good Christmas it's alright look Christmas for us we've got a huge family and anyone who uh, has got a big family who is unless they're like kind of one of those people who just i don't know thrives on socializing uh we always kind of seem to get it we were talking about this we always seem to end up as everyone's mum and dad uh and we sort of end up even though in a lot of the cases we are literally their mum and dad (laughs) (laughs) yeah Uh, but it takes it out of us we're not it doesn't kind of we don't reach replenish by catering to loads of people and looking after loads of people it it depletes us in quite a big <laughs> way so i always come out the other side of christmas you need a break kind of yeah like i've just like stumbled stumbling away from a car crash uh and like i need a holiday and i feel like i need a holiday at the moment and some some serious me time because we didn't get a lot of kind of time to ourselves <laughs> over christmas is that fair mm, yeah yeah but i think i think it's anyone with a big family has that experience yeah but i think also it's like the rest of my family they seem to love it they seem to love the socializing but it really takes it out of me. i mean it's a difference if how frequently you're having to do it yeah but they, you know they would I mean? happily do it every day oh wouldn't they my sisters and my mum. Yeah, but then they can go home in the evening and they've got no, either no kids at home they've or They've got fewer kids than adult. we do. Yeah, because yeah, so between us, we've got six kids. They do kids. have the quiet time got, in the evening. We've got six so. kids, two elderly parents that I have to look after um, a lot of the time. Um, we would have had your brother over and his girlfriend. That's, what, already including, not including ourselves, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would have been ten people that were either staying here or being fed here or... Yeah, um, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, did, did we have a lovely Christmas? It had its moments. It was alright. It, its it moments. was okay. We've had worse, but it was still kind yeah, of the run-up was, was yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Next question, please. Eric Johnson. Eric. Boris Johnson. Sorry, Eric. That's. Um, all right. That's a bit mean, isn't it? Eric Shun. <laughs> 
Uh, okay. after... <laughs> well, you told me I couldn't call him Boris Johnson. Well, so... would you want to be called Boris Johnson? No. Would no. I want to be called Erection? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather be it's called? It's better Eric? than Boris Johnson. Ask if there's any unseen footage of the indoor fire incident with Mr. Gannon. Was Sanjay behind the camera? Don't know who Sanjay is. <laughs> uh... <laughs> If so, any comments from her? Well, we don't know who she is. Yeah, who's Sanjay? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> it's not the first time you've had that. This is it? why I spell my name with a Y. Yeah, funny enough. Well, now let me Some skip that. The there is a question Some about of the time. that. Before we get on to erections. God, are you glad I called him erection now, aren't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we did have a question about your name. Oh, we'll get to it. Oh, no, here. Marta81. Is it Sanya or San... Sanya with is it Sanya with a Y or Sanya with a J or both? It's confusing. Both. Well, it's it's I'm, both. It's with a J, but it's pronounced as if with a Y. So sometimes you spell it with a Y, don't you? Yeah, just so just a pre. It depends on my patients that day. If I can be bothered putting up with the constant Sanja or yeah. Sanjay, then I'll leave it as a J. Tan- or if it's someone that I know, Tanya, Sonia. If it's someone that. I know, I'll leave it with a J. If it's someone that I don't know, or if it, if it's like somewhere where I think people will see it then yeah. I'll put a Y but it is this but both is fine yeah but it's pronounced Sanya yes not, that's more important than the spelling not Sanjay Eric there isn't any <laughs> extra footage we used it all it's simple as that uh, yeah you'd see it all in there what would we have missed out from that you yeah, know you saw the massive explosion come on let's have some more questions Steve Mannion Steve Mannion Super Mannion that's the oh, guy yeah. before gets gets erection. <laughs> gets, say that again. Eric got erection. <laughs> he gets Supermanian. <laughs> um, the manian with a long chin. Uh, Biffo, oh, is there any one. technique program you use to create picture, pixel art? I love drawing. I just used uh, either edit.tf, which is the amazing online teletext editor, or I use Photoshop. That's it. Photoshop for pixel art. It's a bit of a slight faff. You have to turn off. I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. You have to turn off some setting. Otherwise, it tries to anti-alias it all. Um, and you have to really zoom in. You make a really small file and zoom in. But um, So when I did, for instance, at Christmas, the teletext uh, Yule log, it wasn't teletext. That was actually done in Photoshop. Oh. So sneaky, huh? Oh. Bear questions of painting man dem blood. Sanya, what's the one food that there isn't that there isn't a gluten-free version of that you wish they did. This is also from Steve. Okay, there is a gluten-free version of this, but it is never good enough, and that's pastry. There we go. Any pastries, croissants, pan au chocolat, however you say that, they're never, ever good enough. Like, you just want the proper gluten-filled, crispy, yet soft pastry. There we go. You got the answer. I've got a feeling the next question will be the best one yet. Yanas uh, asks, who's your favourite Kevin? Hmm. There's um where we live, our house backs onto um, a house that uh, there was a boy that I went to school with. And I'm sure I've told this story before. A boy called Kevin Hill. who moved to Australia, funny enough. Ah, uh, I found duck. out. Yeah, I found out via Facebook. Um... Kevin was, uh, I always knew him, I was friends with him. I always knew him for having, his sleeves were always too long. So if he was wearing a jumper or a blazer, his sleeves would come down at the end. Oh, like hangover. Yeah, but like his this. trouser legs were always too short. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and this made him your favourite Kevin? No, it was the first one that always comes to mind if someone says Kevin. Oh. Uh, but our house backs onto his old house. Oh, really? Um, our garden basically butts up more or less against his garden where I used to go and play. And I've told you this story about when uh, he asked me if I wanted some jelly be- be- jelly bellies, no, jelly babies. Mm. We were in his garden and he offered me some and the uh, paper bag, obviously pick and mix, was wet. Uh, and I looked in it and the jelly babies were wet, damp and covered in bits of bits of grass. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I said, like... <laughs> Uh, did you did you drop these, Kevin? <laughs> did you drop these? And he went, no. Um, it's because of the the factory where they make these jelly babies, um, they make them on the lawn. <laughs> Just, this is why he's your favourite, Kevin. Yeah, I suspect that was a lie. 
<laughs> really not. Yeah, he once tried to steal my Donkey Kong game and watch as well. But that's so another story. Steal your donkey. He did, I caught him in the, the act. Oh. He tried to steal a dartboard shape <gasps> uh, rubber stroke eraser and uh, my Donkey Kong. And then what did you say? How did you I said well I didn't I saw them. How did his, you bring up the I subject? I saw them through his carrier the you know, side of his carrier bag. I went, oh, is that my Donkey Kong in there? Um, oh, and I genuinely, no. I was genuinely like kind of... I yeah, you you didn't think um, he'd stolen yeah, it. Yeah, but what then happened was, it was he burst into tears and ran away. Uh, ran oh, home. no, and he never <laughs> stole anything ever again. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's a bit sad, really. I wonder if there'll be any more questions. Chris JC, hey. Yay. Asks, how's your keyboard playing coming along and is it time for the guitar next? My keyboard playing isn't coming along because I don't play keyboards. I gave up trying to learn um, because I'm impatient and so I compose entirely in logic. I gave up. That was it, really. There wasn't the space for a full size keyboard, which is It does take years to learn the keyboard. Well, it, any instrument. Yeah, I mean, it? I kind of get the basics of music now. Um, uh, but it's a, about that muscle memory, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's so like I don't play keyboard. I never, I never got far with it. Um, I, I, I'm more confident now, though, with I guess my composition. Uh, and there was a piece of music I shared with, I think, the top tier patrons recently that um, is the sort of thing I wouldn't have attempted a year ago because it's a bit more experimental. But I feel I can be a bit more experimental now because I, I feel I. Um, understand music a bit better and now I can make the kind of music I want to make so it's probably my favorite bit of music that I've ever ever done it's quite ambienty and um soundscapey uh but yeah but I didn't I, I didn't I don't I couldn't do a live performance because um I never learned hee-haw stupid Mr Biffo was too lazy to learn piano bet he'd have learned it if the piano put cake in his mouth every time he pressed a key Simon Lee Tranter. I've given up giving people names. Did you see the... Yeah, you gave up after like the first two. Oh. I'm too <laughs> tired. <laughs> Just in general. In general. Tired of this year. <laughs> Sick of this year. Ten days in. Um, did you see the rebooted Games Master on, on Channel 4? And if so, what did you think? Um, yes, I did. I, I admit I haven't seen every episode. I know they only did three. We saw Quang on it. Yes, we saw that Quang. That was really on it. cool. Quang, who has been on Digitized. And Bex Tri okay. Trisha was in it as well, wasn't sometimes she? Sometimes when you mention people we know, it's sometimes good to qualify to explain who they are, the people, because otherwise they're like, who's that? Yes. I know Quang is kind of omnipresent in the retro he's, gaming he's scene. He's been on this channel. He has. Quang has been on here. And he's. Um, More than once. Zobi Tech Quang. Yes. Uh, who we love and we hope. We will be he'll be involved with Digi Level Two at some point. Um, yes, I did say it. Yes, we saw Quang on it. Uh, Rav Florence, who supported Digi Level Two, um, I thought did a great job as host. I thought the show as a whole felt like Games Master. It was weird. One thing that really jumped out. I mean, this sounds like damning with faint praise. Was was how it sounded like Games Master. The sort of sort of echoey location they had. I forgot that was sort of a part of Games Master, but. For something to come back and, and feel exactly like it did after you know nearly 30 years it was a hell of a good job and i think they did a great job of balancing a new audience potentially with a with the, with the the old farts who kind of go you know Ooh, don't mess with the, my childhood that sort of thing um no it's not for me because digitizer level two is the sort of game show that i want you know <laughs> it will be nothing like Get games master um, yeah, well, yeah, well, that's our big project for the year. Uh, but, but it's not for me because I, I sometimes find it boring to watch people playing games. Sorry. Um, and that was always my issue with Games Master. I like the bits in between the challenges and the new Games Master. I like the review bits and, um, yeah, the sort of other incidental bits that they dropped in. The the, the more consulvania type moments that, that Rab put in. Uh, and it's, so it's, I think what they did, they did brilliantly and they got it exactly right and they didn't mess with the formula in the slightest. And I thought, um, you know, uh, yeah, they didn't they didn't scare the horses uh, in a good way. But yeah, but I, I, yeah, Games Master, I always kind of like the features on there, not the, in the reviews, even though the reviews, as I know full well, were fast speaking as someone who was on there. What does that mean? 
Oh, they all know the story. Oh, when I was okay. on Games Master, surely. Oh, right, right. <laughs> and had like five minutes to play the games before I had to review oh, them yeah. to okay. a national audience. And so I sat there like a kind of startled rabbit Aww. with my bad hair. And yes, ha, ha, didn't I look funny? Um, didn't 21 year old Paul look funny? Didn't, wasn't he ugly? No, don't That's what say they, that. Was, that was the implication. No, okay. That's the implication when they all take no, the piss out of him. That's my feelings. Try being me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't um, to say Simon Lee either. Tranter says, uh, did you sit, I've just read that. <laughs> but has asked for Sanya, one of the joys of the Digi videos in Beampod is the playful interaction between you and Biffo. Did you ever think you'd become such an integral part of his creative projects? And did you have reservations or fears about appearing on screen or doing Beampod? Uh, good question. Good question. I can't re- or remember the beginning of the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, he Did likes, he likes our become... interaction. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, uh, do you remember that? No, I didn't. And yes, I did have fears about both. Great answer. <laughs> so in depth. Well, no, only because, <laughs> only because my fears are mainly about I'm not the most... Uh, eloquent of people, so my I brain. Think, my I brain's think everyone, not to... everyone watching this will disagree with you. No, I I feel it, especially with Biampod because it's audio only, and it's sometimes it's really hard to put into words my thoughts, and my thoughts don't always work in a linear way. They're like jumbled up, so trying to detangle them. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just listening to what you're saying. Oh, trying to detangle them takes, <laughs> okay, yeah, takes quite a lot of work. Uh, so that was my, my main issue and it often trips me up both in videos and in Biampod. But I've just learned to live with it. It doesn't come across, but anyway. um, I, I can hear it. And yeah, that's, that's the main You were thing. worried at points that because there were times early on when I wanted you to be involved and you were like, no, 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 it's you and Gannon or it's your thing. There were times when you said that to me. Um, you felt... Okay. I don't you, remember did, that. Yeah, there were times when you felt, oh no, no, people... And it took you, and I'm glad you got over but this. But I think that was it, mainly because when it was about video games, it's like, like I'm really out of my depth with that. Yeah. Yeah, which is why you, yeah. you know, you're, you probably I don't will... really feel I've got anything to contribute because it's just foreign, yeah. foreign territory. Whereas Ga- when Gannon you're says about... exact same thing, though. Yeah, he was a games journalist <laughs> and he knows a lot about games. Um, but, you know, for other stuff, when we're just sitting and chatting. But it still took you a while it's... to feel. Um, because and it's great. I you know, I talked to you about this before Christmas. You realise now that there are people who want to see you on the channel. That's really sweet. Yeah, you know, like, but you. you know it, and that's what's lovely. Because for a long time, yeah, you know, and I I had it as well. You know, imposter syndrome of kind of like you know people aren't here to see me. They're here to see, you know, as I thought for a long time. Partly because people would tell me it. We want to see Larry. We want to see Octavius. We want to see Gannon. We want to see Eli. Um, and it. it it, but in the last two years since lockdown, and particularly in the last year, it feels like I've claimed this channel back after digitizing the show. We talked about it, I think, on a Patreon video, did we, recently or something? Maybe. don't know. Maybe we just talked about it with ourselves. Yeah. But it feels like we don't get those sort of comments as much anymore. Uh, and, yeah, and that was really hard because it's like, you know, everyone knows Digitizer was mine. Uh, or everyone knows, I know, <laughs> Digitizer was yeah. mine. I, you know, literally, I own Digitizer. I own the brand. Um, I set up this channel. You know, I was the creative driving force behind it. But because we have big personalities on the channel who had their own audiences. Uh, and I hadn't built an audience in the YouTube sphere. Uh, it took, you know, it, it meant that I sort of got overshadowed on my own channel. And, you know, it took a long time for for people to sort of realise that Digi was mine and then for us to kind of find our own audience. I mean, post digitising the show, for the year and a half afterwards, perhaps longer, we just hemorrhaged viewers constantly. But in the last year, we've started putting them on um, for the first time since then. Uh, you know, we, we shot up like that when digitising the show went out, the first series. And then afterwards, you know, when they realised, oh, it wasn't that every week, it just went gradually down and down and down until, until 
sort of in the last year when which is interesting because in the last year it's been primarily you and me and then we have these special episodes like Supernatural World or Digitizer Deluxe where we get Ganon in or you know an Eli or Ashens or whoever but we do it sparingly so people no longer are kind of expecting those people always to be on the channel it, it, it's kind of clear that that's a special thing um, and the, the baseline is generally me and Sanya is that right? You're very quiet. Oh, um, I was listening and not interrupting. Oh. <laughs> I, I know I know that's really rare. Yes. <laughs> that's unusual for you to experience. But, uh, did I say all that right? I think I'm so, yeah. I'm a bit weirded yeah. out by I how mean, quiet you were. <laughs> I was actually listening. Oh. Um, well, oh no, the baseline is always you. You're the centre right. of the channel. Um, yes, because I mean, we will, we'll get Ganon back on at some point. Yeah. Um, and Anthony, uh, and, and we do, you know, Digi Deluxes. Yeah, well, I want things. my and mate I, Anthony back yeah. as well. Um, yeah, but but it's clear it, it's clear that people get the Digi's mine again yeah. now. People in YouTube land, the current audience that we have, they get that it's mine. Um, and our patrons will our patrons will know. I had I went through a real freaking crisis post digitizer the show that lasted quite a while. It, that well, lasted it did about a year because because. It was constant, the messages that I get saying, oh, when such and such coming back on. So it never felt like anyone was there to see what I was offering, even though when we had guests, I was still the kind of creative driving force. But no one saw that because a lot of that was behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, I, think, and, I think having lockdown helped a lot because yeah. you were able to just be you. Yeah, I hate to say it, but COVID was the best thing that happened at this channel. <laughs> it helped Me. you find yeah. your feet and even in even in the second half of last year as well you're still kind of cre finding your creative feet and sort of maybe for the first couple of years since digitizer the show you were toddling and yeah. now you've started to properly well walk. I, I didn't want to scare the horses but part of that is as well why i didn't really always i felt a bit reticent yeah why would you want to why would you want to come on this even channel? in my yeah. head the channel was like video games and oh, the only guests were performers and youtubers yeah. it's like well i'm just a normal person i'm not a performer and then on top of that to have these issues with speaking um you if you were inside me you would know how yeah, hard it is for the brain to connect uh, to weirdly I, I feel the same way i used it for about no it. way because you to, think I used of to, stuff like that and you're able to explain yourself so well i used to fret about it as a teenager what okay this is news yeah what i, did. I used to worry i used to worry that there was something wrong with me because no. sometimes yeah That's and i still so get weird. it but i'm just used to it but you're so quick and you explain yourself but so this well is, this is like, actually, i've always said my brain is not connected to my mouth She's my not quick is, at all, is she? My she's brain is more talking. It's just constant instead, instead of being concise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. But it does tie back into the the channel, funnily enough, because uh, because I'm not a performer uh, mm. and you're not a performer. And sometimes mm. when I'm on here with, you know, it's like Gannon early on, he was kind of like my stabilizers, you know, right, learning to ride. And I didn't ever feel confident enough to just sort of claim the channel as much as anything, you know, and I, I'm indebted to Paul for that. Uh, but being sort of forced through COVID and lockdown and stuff, not being able to do videos with him like we had and doing them with you, um, you know, it gave me the confidence to sort of get rid of those stabilizers. But there are still times sometimes when I'm, I'm doing stuff with other performers where I feel like I'm really having a paddle to keep up and it really takes it out of me. Um, you know, I love working with Paul. I love working with Eli. Uh, all of the, the guests that we have on here, Sue's, you know, we do it because we love hanging out with them and doing stupid stuff with them. But I can find it really exhausting because I don't, it doesn't come naturally to me because it feels like often with those guys, particularly Paul and Eli, when they're on together, they have such a sort of natural rapport because they've worked together for years. Um, I I can sometimes feel like I'm struggling. Um, that do, like, as an observer, like that does not show. But it from takes the it outside. out. Of me. It takes it out of me. It feels like I'm having to go at 100 miles an hour when my natural speed is 60. <laughs> and my natural speed is like 25 it to 30. Really, so it, like, it really is me. <laughs> next to me, you're like Sonic the Hedgehog. It really isn't. But it does feel like you and I 
um, because we're not performers and because we've known each other for so long and you know we all you know we spend every day with each other that that it doesn't knacker me out in the same sort of way mm. but saying that you know yes of course there'll be more going on here but but I think what this channel has given me is that post digi the show it was like oh it's me and Gannon that's what it is but um but really always and he always used to say this to me it was always like this is you know digi you need to claim it he did say that but I just wasn't ready you know and then mm. on top of that as well as not being ready because I wasn't used to being on camera um I had all these fuckers kind of saying you know <laughs> you know biffo shit and we want Larry Octavius Eli and mm. Paul um, Aww, you know, and so and that lasted a long time. Yeah, I mean, and that would knock anyone's confidence. Yes, yeah. you know, and I, yeah, and yeah, it, it, and, it, and it, it did, it did knock my confidence, but I stuck to my guns, and um, you know, it was well, like it's digit, that you yeah, did. it's like digitizer for Christ's sakes, it's mine. It's you know, yeah. it's like certain people in this country well, kind I'm of hoping... know it's synonymous with me, straight Mr. Yeah, Biffo. and I'm hoping that you're seeing because there's been growth over the last year six months especially that i hope you're feeling more yeah it's slow growth but it's growth yeah the channel is is growing and that's all, slowly yeah. but it is growing for the after not growing for a long time and i think last in the last year we put out our best stuff because it was the year the prior previous year so i felt the confidence of sort of claiming digi back for, for myself and then in the past year i think we put out you know, it felt like it knew what it wanted to be. Yes, that is, you know, that's the stupid what, characters which were always like. digi. Yeah. You know, the I love Supernatural World that we did last year, you know, Golden Bean, all of that. Yeah, I think it good was, fun. we put out our best stuff. And as I've explained to patrons, I've kind of given myself permission not to feel I've got to do a video every week. Um, that's made such a huge difference in just your creative spark. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden you feel more inspired and you've got more energy for it well it, it's because um yeah it's be, it's because what i enjoy is the creating uh, uh and the the creative aspect of, of doing a youtube channel and that means kind of you know the weird cutaways i like our episodes each one of them i want each one of them to feel like a special you mm -hmm. know so each one feels like a program you know you have different segments of it not this one this, no, is, yeah, no, this, this, one. Is, this is a throwback but yeah. um i want each one to feel special and that takes time and if you're just feeding the audience each week and kind of trying to rush in to get something out yeah you're focusing on quantity rather than quality yeah. it's like quick quick time 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 i don't want to do that anymore whereas giving yourself taking away that deadline which yeah. you would put on yourself no one had put pressure no, on you but it was the, the that outside. was the youtube thing you need to be regular that was the whole yeah thing. that's that what they the say even wisdom. though a lot of youtubers don't do that plus as well the other thing we got told oh keep the video short which they were in the beginning 15 minutes and yet something we've learned that works for us and our audience is longer videos generally do better for us our sweet spot is about yeah. 45 minutes yeah we don't know why uh, they just do yeah i don't know why so but within that i don't want it to just be the same thing for 45 yeah. minutes i want it to you want change to mix up. It up so um that's the other thing going but i've really noticed a difference in you since you took that pressure off yourself yeah and went right i'm gonna take as much time as i need to plus this episode yes plusing it is what we we call it which is a disney phrase but yeah, so going forward, there'll be fewer episodes like this. We'll do them once in a while because it's just nice chatty stuff. They'll, but we do do them on Patreon, Patreon more often. There'll be more of these. Even though uh, we haven't done one on there for ages. Well, we did one with Anthony, but then... We did a podcast last we week. We did a podcast last week. Yeah, for our yes, patrons. Yes, we did. Uh, that's what we did instead. Yes, so the time's kind of moulding, melding into one at yeah. the moment. So, sorry, I've waffled about off this one question, just talking about <laughs> Digi in general. Um, well, you did say you wanted to talk in general. Yeah, so of course, but of though. course this year, so what have we got coming up? Um, we're going to be doing more Digi Deluxe type things in the studio. Yes, well, we've but got Digitizer Level 2. Our videos will continue to be sort of more varied, um, with different sections. Yes. More so, I think, as the year goes on. Um, hopefully more guests. We uh, will, of course, be doing Digi Level 2, which filming for that will happen throughout the year. We've started planning it. Uh, I've started planning it this this last week. Um, which will be 
me and Ganon. So, you know, you'll get a big hard fix of me and Ganon together. Uh, which, of course, he'll also be in Digi Deluxes and, you know, we're we'll, sure we'll have him sat on the sofa Hopefully again Hopefully we'll do soon. more su- Supernatural Worlds Yes, as well. we want to do more Supernatural Worlds. Yeah. And we also want to go to the woods for something else, don't we? Yes. Yes. Uh, right, let's move on, because yeah. I've talked too much about Digi. Blimey. That answer went on a bit. Stephen Fury asks, Hi, Paul and Sonia. I was wondering if Biffo has ever been to Australia and whether you two would visit in the future. As a side note, I'd love to see some gaming streams on Twitch like you did several years ago on YouTube. I'll sub to your channel for sure. Hmm. Uh, okay, two part. We'll discuss that in a minute. We um, want to get you to Australia. <laughs> well, we did spend New Year's Eve or around New Year's watching uh, travel vlogs of Australia. Of Australia. So yeah. it felt like we visited. Yeah, we uh, we spent a whole whole of New Year's Day pretty much doing that for some reason. Yeah, we were just like travelling up the coast. And that's why I said Tasmania, because one of the videos was in Tasmania. It's just so amazing yeah, there. Yeah, but we haven't So yet. beautiful. Oh, and I'd love to go up to Queensland. and oh, just, part, yeah. part of the reason why is Australia, we haven't been is there's a lot of us that would have to go. There's a lot of us, kids. yeah. And then... They want to see their grandparents. top of that... Australia is twice as expensive to go to as like anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, yeah. your family were you know when we were lucky enough to go to America with the kids one year. I think well, I thought well you could have come to Australia, but it's like we looked at the prices and the flights are like twice as much. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, but I think if we went, we'd want to go for like a month. And yes. Sort of properly see where and, you grew up, and but and also travel, travel around. around as well. Oh, it would be amazing. It would be amazing. Um, in terms of gaming streams on Twitch, I don't know. Again, it comes back to that thing of I don't, I don't enjoy watching people play games. I hate to say it. Uh, so I don't know whether I want to do that for other people. When I did do, it, I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, if I did Twitch, and I'm not ruling it out this year, we we do keep talking about doing Twitch or YouTube streams or something. Probably Twitch, because that seems to be where all the cool kids go. Uh, it wouldn't be gaming streams. I mean, we're not a gaming channel anymore. I don't feel I'm really a gaming brand, even though we're doing Digi Level 2. But, you know, let's face it, Digi Level 2 is, is going to be about games, but it's not going to be hardcore about games i want to make a gaming show that someone like sanya would enjoy wow that's a challenge that's the challenge yeah um yeah but then yeah i think it can be done because i'll watch top gear and i know nothing about cars well you like i love top gear you like big chunks of the first series yeah if you you can set aside the ptsd you have over the making of it yeah no no i thought it was great so there you go i think i think you will succeed uh, so yeah, I, if I did do live streams, it would not be me playing games. I'm really sorry. It's, it's boring. <laughs> I find that really boring. But you don't mind if I watch you play a game? No, I, you're okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you. I, do you know what I think? I think I'd find it a bit lonely. Oh. Uh, what? That's... Talking into the ether, isn't it? It's a bit. Yeah, if I did the streams, I'd rather do them with you. And, you know, completely candidly. What, me watching you play a game? Because, like, if, no, if no, I tried no, to I'm play talk, a game, you'll no, be, like, dead game, in the Take second. games out of it entirely. Oh, I see, I see. I'd say it would be with you. It would be like mm. this, but live. But I feel I've got to be able to offer something that's a bit different to what we do on here. Yeah. So, um, don't know. But if I did it, this is going to sound really mercenary, and I don't like doing things for this reason. But if I did it, it would be to raise a bit of extra money just because, you know, my career, thanks to COVID, is still uh, limping, to say the least. Um, And I don't know. uh, I don't know if that's the best use of my time in terms of raising income. Yeah, maybe I should use my energy elsewhere. We want to raise some money, like doing a book or something. This guy talks too much. FFS. Chris Bell, lovely Chris Bell, asks, is there anything you can reveal about your plans for location shooting on Digi Series 2 yet? Uh, that's a good question. Yes, uh, there aren't really any concrete plans, but I was looking up uh, plans for a potential road trip episode that we wanted to do. I was looking up a route yesterday. For instance, going to Derby, where Core Design used to be, and where, of course, 
Lara Croft was born, um, and they have a, name, a road named after Lara Croft called Lara Croft Way. Uh, what do we do there? Don't know yet, but we do want to do a sort of road trippy thing. Mm. Yes, um, for one episode as a special Top Gear style <laughs> episode, basically. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah, it would be me and Gannon and maybe some other guests in a car going around somewhere. Around town. Going around town. Sanya, I hope, will be on screen in Digitizer Level 2. Because originally we sort of talked about putting it on its own channel. But mm. the support we got for it was so... Um, I don't know, the feedback we got as well, people sort of saying they just sort of trusted me to do it. It's like, well, why separate it? You know, and I think it won't feel... It'll still feel like part of the channel, I hope. That's what I want it to feel like. Yes, it'll be... Yeah, I don't want to make the mistake of, of what we did before <laughs> when we did six episodes that were totally different to what came afterwards. Mm. Um, I wanted to still feel like it fits with what we do. So, mm. you know, originally I was like, no Venus in it, no Tony Harris or whatever. And they might not be in it, but there will be characters. Because Digi has always been about the characters. So, yeah, it should feel like part of the channel will just have a different title sequence and be a little bit more sort of magazine show-esque. Uh, Chris also asked, who would be your fant fantasy lineup of guests for the Golden Bean? Famous or not, living or dead, assuming they all say yes, more for, for them. Um, I think it's funnier the less they know. <laughs> mm. I think it would be funny to get some people on who thought they were on a proper game show that didn't have a clue uh, and I don't I don't know if I'd want famous people necessarily it's a trouble because it was we like did, having your sister on that was that's that's the best that's sort of guest during digi live yeah my sister was the best guest we could have had <laughs> an anatomical bomb Dan oh yeah who I love oh, my goodness. and Dan <laughs> has a weird sense of humor but my favourite bit in the Christmas oh, Golden Bean. Oh my goodness! He kept watching it back. Was the vaccination section, <laughs> uh, and Dan Dan's reaction to being offered <laughs> <laughs> the vaccination. Just and even oh, now, just he, he was seemed he, he seemed so disturbed. <laughs> so someone who will be disturbed and bothered by the whole thing doesn't need to be anyone famous. Um. I'd like you on it, Chris. I've actually have asked you, haven't I, in the past? So you're still oh. welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, if it was someone famous, it would have to be someone who was a little bit... <clears throat> sorry, legs kind of sleep. A bit cheesy, a bit kind of... Someone 80, like Christopher Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> someone like that. Rula Lenska. <laughs> Bring back Larry, Octavius, Eli and Gannon. Uh, Chris JC, back again. Um, now you've broken the language barrier with the unedited BTS video. Remember you were swearing? Oh my that? goodness. What's your favourite swear word? Who, me? Yeah, you started swearing in front of your kids. You're like, oh, they're old enough now, haven't you? Well, I don't full on swear. It's just if yeah. something happens. it's They're just words. It's not like, I don't know why you're What's so... What's your favourite? You're so against swearing. swearing and yet you do swear all the time. No, I don't. No, it does a little bit. Um, my favourite swear word, probably the classic shit. That's just... Classic shit. She's still... <laughs> and yet, when you're on camera, why do you do that when you're on camera? <laughs> because you make yeah. such a fuss out of it. Yeah, classic shit is the... It's just, you know, simple but effective. Okay. What's your favourite? I don't know. I don't know if I have a favourite. I mean, the F word's probably the one I use the most. Is it? Yeah, you got lippy on your teeth, by the way. Oh, no. How long's that been there? Is it gone? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. The F word's I don't your really favourite. have a favourite. No. What's the one you find the I'm most bell -end satisfying? I like. <laughs> bell end is <laughs> fun. It's not really a swear word. It really is. Is it? I, I don't know. What's your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I don't think words like bloody, bell end, <laughs> bollocks... <laughs> Twat. You know what a bell end is, I don't, don't you? Yeah, but I what don't class... It? It's like the top of the willy, isn't it? The top of the willy. <laughs> top of the willy, Tia. <laughs> the top of the willy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, she's embarrassed herself. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, 
I don't think those words are. Sw- I don't class them as swear words. You would get it on like, CBBC if someone called someone a bell end. No, true, um, but they're not. They're not. They're like kind of really mild, aren't they? I don't know. Mm. What What does everyone else think? Leave a comment. Is bell end a swear word? Well, okay, it is, it's kind <laughs> of a swear word, but it's not like massively offensive, surely, or is it? Is it? Didn't really grow up with the word bell end. So it doesn't have that that weight. Doesn't have that weight to me. (laughs) Speak for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Christ. Nick and Bunty, lovely Nick and Bunty. Who was the nicest famous bod you've worked with? Terry Jones from Monty Python. Shadow of a doubt. God rest his soul. Uh, Chinny Vision asks. I know this, he's responding to Nick and Bunty, it's Francis Wilson, Biffo is his best mate. He used to go to China Whites with him after he'd done the weather, it's all true. Now, Chinny, I don't know if you're referring to me mentioning that I did meet Francis Wilson, who used to be a weatherman for Breakfast TV and Sky. Oh, right. I don't know if you're referring to that, because I have met Francis Wilson. And I will say this, he was weird. Weird how? (laughs) Because he had all this weather in his head. Um, because we met him while he was I working. I thought you meant weather in his hair. He came in with a cloud in this side. And well, he was a tornado working. Tornado in that side. He was working at Sky, and he yeah. and I was researching a pilot that I did about Weatherman. Uh, he really didn't want us there, uh, but I could understand why because he was constantly looking at sort of meteorological charts, and you know he was not, he was a forecaster. He wasn't just like a reader. All right. Uh, so, so he, he had, had to keep all this calculations and, and stuff. He had to be ready for the next kind of broadcast, sort of five minutes to the hour every, you know, every, five minutes to every half hour. But in between that, he was sort of updating kind of the world weather for the red oh button goodness. services. Sounds intense. Uh, and you'd talk to him, and he wasn't really looking at you. He'd be just looking beyond you, and you'd ask him questions, and you'd get this weird, vague answer. Because he then, was busy trying to work out. <laughs> Yeah. The patterns of the weather. And I remember and me and the producer that I was with, we asked him a question and he just shut, stuck out his hand and said, well, goodbye then. Oh, uh, as you told. <laughs> it's like, right, okay. Uh, but it was really <laughs> awkward. We sat in his office for about three hours and him just trying to ignore us. Oh, Doing guy. his he, best to ignore he, us. But he needed to work out all the weather patterns and stuff. It's really awkward. Oh, no. We are past the halfway point now. <laughs> Odd Pod, go check out the Odd Pod channel. Ask, are there any videos or characters you planned that got scrapped and why did they? Or any videos made that never released? Yeah, uh, there are some. Sometimes they end Mm. up on Patreon. If you want to join our Patreon, details below. Uh, We did do, when we did the last run of Digitized Deluxes with Suze and Ash, um, we did a warm-up video that didn't go out. Uh, It was the raffle ticket game. Did that never go out? No. What? Do you, oh. know, do you know why? Why? The sound wasn't... No, the sound was fine. Why, why then? It was vanity. That's bad. What happened? Oh, fat belly. Oh, no. <laughs> I was sat on a high no. chair with a, my oh. belly out. That's why you didn't put the video out? Yeah. Oh. That's bad, isn't it? All the, all the, but it was only meant to be a warm up anyway. Yeah. For for the golden bean, it yeah. was only ever meant to be as a warm up. But we filmed it just in case. Yeah. Um, and there was the um. Although I don't know if you put it out in the end, the dragon's den. No, I didn't pull it out because we, we didn't. But that was, was because it. We put out the the Chris that was Bullock technical put reasons. Out the, that was yeah. We did yeah. a whole and it was technical reasons because we filmed it at the very end of a day of Digi Deluxe, the first set of Digi Deluxe. Uh, oh, the end of two days yeah, or something two years like that. Ago. Yeah. Uh, and it was a Dragon's Den spoof episode thing. Uh, and Chris Bullock was in it. It was great. And Eli and Ash and Paul. But um, we didn't, because we were rushed it, we didn't have time to properly set up the camera angles. And so it was badly lit. The angles, it was, some of it was out of focus. Some of it had like people sat in the background. And it just didn't have the feel that I wanted. So uh, our Patreon, we did... Um, Chris Bullock very kindly edited the audio together so it went out on on there instead and a lot of people really loved it and said it was really funny but um, so if you join our Patreon you get all these kind of bonuses there's loads of stuff on there ha 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 great dancer you too Lord Ask excellent Lord Asks ask of all the telly that's ever been on which show would you have loved to have been involved with on screen or behind the scenes um Doctor Who probably yeah the original (laughs) 
That's it. Particularly in the 80s, the late 80s, the sort of Andrew Cartmel era uh, with Sylvester McCoy, because I think there was a certain degree of ambition that, that came back to the show in its last two years. Hmm. Uh, but I want to be involved with the new Doctor Who, the new era, um, new Who. Uh, I don't know, that really scares me. That's where you're really exposed. Exposed? What do you mean? Well, it's very, very public and it's got a huge fan base now. And I don't know. What would scare you about it? The pressure. The pressure, I think. Yeah. I'd love to do a big finish. I've said this so many times. Big finish, you do audio Doctor Who plays. Um, I'd love to do one of those. I have tried, but I don't know. I don't know why it seems like such a bloody closed... <laughs> a closed... Uh, door. Loop. Door oh. to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, you know, we've got Royal Television Society Award there. We'll Baff the poster up there. And massive Doctor Who fan. You'd think I'd be you know, a, you you know think I'd be a shoe in. Stuff. You'd think I'd be a shoe in, wouldn't you? Yeah. We've tried. I try again. Watch this space. Anyone knows Nicholas Briggs? <laughs> you know, showrunner of like four bloody different co-written series, co-created series on CBBC. Writer of Pudsey the Dog the Movie. Um, what did I, Was that the answer to the question? Doctor Who, yeah. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Grange Hill. I saw it was coming back as a film, but Grange Hill would have been the one, one that I would have loved to have worked on. I'm quite proud of the fact that Four O'Clock Club that I did sort of ended up becoming a bit of a successor to Grange Hill because we lasted 10 years. That's amazing. Um, wow. Is almost half wow, of the longest Doctor Who, years. Yeah, or ten series. That's really and would have got a three part three part finale. Yeah, but Thanks COVID, COVID came along two weeks before. Filming. Oh my goodness! That, yeah, that buggered up my finances. Yeah, oh well. For the last two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this will all be over soon. Tamara Cade asked, "How big was the biggest dog you've ever seen?" I, I uh, as I told Tamara on Twitter, I can answer this. Can you? Yeah, there was two dogs that were the same size. My sister and her first husband lived in this former post office. It was like two houses. What? They po- lived in a former post yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, but That's it was cool. It was their house and the house next door. You know, it had been converted into two houses. Mm. Uh, I mean, not massively converted. You got a dribble on your chin there. Yeah. Um, but the, the neighbours had an enormous pair of dogs that were so big that their food had to be off the floor because the dogs, if they bent wow. down to eat, couldn't reach the floor. Were I, they, what's the name of them? Irish wolfhounds or something, that sort of thing. I don't know. Big dogs. Yeah. I've seen a big dog, but I don't know the type it is. I've but it seen was a, huge. I've it seen a like, big dog, but I don't know the type. Yeah, what a great story. I used to know the type. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let's move on. And then they've got... The, is it the one with the big saggy and then they Blood drool hell. everywhere? No. That, that's not why I need to find, find out. out afterwards. No. I need to find out. We've been doing this for an hour and a half. Okay, fine. I won't find out. The big Tanya also once saw a big dog. Our cat looks really tall. No, it doesn't. She's he obsessed. does. If he was she a human. He talks about our cat like it's a giant was, cat. And it if isn't. he was a human, it he'd isn't. be like seven foot tall. No, he wouldn't. He would. He's, he's really tall. He's and a, you see him stand up. It's like, whoa. He's of average cat height. child. Cat. Matt Barney asks, as somebody who is married, who has married up, do you know what that means? No. Someone who's who's too good for them. Well, he's talking to me or you. Well, he said, as somebody who's ma- who married up, as in, you know, punching above his weight, as I'm repeatedly told, what's your top tip for keeping your partner happy? I'm mostly interested in seeing the argument over which one of you married oh, up. Ah, okay. <laughs> What was, the, what was the question? What is your How top keep tip for keeping happy? your partner happy? Well, we had... Um, we, we weren't very happy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. No. We weren't happy at all. We weren't. We, uh, had a, we annoyed each other. Yeah, but that was after that. We well, already... I was trying to be annoyed because we started filming way too late. Mm. And then we had a lot of technical stuff. A lot of technical uh, issues. Um, and then, a lot. And then... Tanya snapped at me because she said I was snapping at her. Yeah. Um, we snapped at each other. Which we do a lot. Uh, but what I will say is we never argue about big stuff. Ever. We have the most pathetic arguments yeah, over the most pathetic small really things. Dumb. They're really dumb. Mm-hmm. But the important thing is the big stuff we all seem to generally agree on. 
Yes. Generally. Yeah. Um, the big important stuff in life. Uh, I hate to say it, but... I don't feel... The, the biggest thing you and I need is time together. Yes. Which we don't always get because... Well, we haven't had of it. the huge family. Recent weeks. Yeah. Uh, we need that. We need mm. those date nights. Mm-hmm. And time to ourselves without having to give to loads of other people, which we generally have to do a lot of. Um, yeah, not a moan. Love our kids. Love our my parents and everyone else. But, yeah, we... we we're... Um, pushed and pulled in lots of different directions so we need that but Mm -hmm. that's because we want to spend time with each other yeah we have fun we enjoy spending time together we enjoy like still talking and having conversations yeah you're my best mate so doing stuff together we want to have time to do that yeah um and when we have disagreements or you know one of us isn't happy or something we you know even if we're you know sometimes we're happy we're not happy for our own reasons not to do with each other and we'll do our best to talk it out and try we're quite and, supportive of each other yeah try uh, and work it out or just listen but sometimes as that's I, enough as I say I hate to say this I think the thing is get it right get the right find the right person <laughs> um, yeah it does help that we're very similar with our well we've got similar interests we're very similar we've got a similar outlook on life yep and similar values yep um, we kind of like doing similar things. Yep. <laughs> Especially <It's> eating. <laughs> yeah. But we do. We like. So we, bad, we enjoy but... the same things, don't we? That's, yeah. That's it. It makes a big difference. And then, and then that gives us loads to talk about. We make each other laugh. So if we're watching, like, for example, we've got similar taste in shows most of the time and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. We make each other laugh. Oh, I yeah. make you laugh too. Yes, dear. Oh, um good. Good yeah, and that that all though is not stuff that we have to work at because it was there from day one. Yeah, and that's really important. You finding someone compatible, you know, um, and that's I know that's probably easier said than done. I know we got lucky, but we got lucky after perhaps not being so lucky for a while. Uh, but um, yeah, that's the thing, and then we just need time together, time to enjoy. Yeah. The fact that, that to enjoy our mutual compatibility, we do make an effort <laughs> to have time together, and mm. you know, make sure that we get days where it's just you and me. We need. We that. do. What well, we do? Well, you say we make an effort. We try. Okay. It's okay, not but like, easy. Christmas is an exception, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. Christmas is an exception, mm. but generally we will make an effort to make sure we have at least once a week. Yeah. Where we can have undivided attention, just for. It's each really other. important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this looks like we've got undivided attention right now. Or really, we're talking to you. Who, me? Okay, CM Grump asks, if it had high ratings and many writing in so I don't get... It had... No, I'll start that again. It had high ratings and many writing in so I don't get what was it, why the suits weren't happy with Digitizer. Uh, We were naughty. We were really badly behaved in the office. Um, We dicked around far too much. They didn't get the humour. And I think... I answered this question funny enough the other day on a podcast that I did, Couch Pilots podcast, where I was talking about Biffo Vision. Because they asked exactly the same question, weirdly. Uh, and the, the, I think they they didn't get the humour, so they felt on the outside of it. And also they always felt that we were doing stuff that was going over their heads. But I think really they thought the appeal of Digitizer was the video games and not the stupid humour and the characters. And that's why they wanted to kind of squash all that because they thought Digitizer would be just as popular without all that shit. And as history proved, once they got rid of all that for a year, it wasn't as popular. Um, and that's why they asked me to bring it back. Um, yeah, that's why I think. I think they thought the appeal with video games, so why are these two idiots or this idiot, as it ended up being, um, why is he... Why, you know, why are they putting all this stuff in that no one wants? Because that's what I was told when the humour was taken out, was that the humour excluded people. That was the exact phrase. It excluded people. I think that may have been the management of Teletext talking about themselves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, when the humour was gone, well... We excluded more people. We excluded more people. <laughs> yeah. Hurry up and finish. 
I need a poo poo. So Tom and my inner devil Omus asked, what is one thing you <laughs> yourself and Sanya would like to get for Christmas with money being no issue within reason? What would we have liked to get and what would each of you like to gift to the other person? What did we give each other for what Christmas? Is, sorry, because I've, I've, I've gotten so distracted by your name, Tom, <laughs> and my inner devil Omus. <laughs> <gasps> That's brilliant. Uh... Oh, is one thing you... Christmas present with money, no issue. Uh, I would... This is all I want. I want the money to pay off the debts that I've racked up in the last two years thanks to COVID. Yeah, same. That's it. Same. If money's that no would, issue. That would be the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. I'd like to be able to pay off everything yeah. that I, I owe from the last two years because it has been brutal. Yep. Agreed. And what would we like to gift each other to the other person? What with the well, same, she, same well, thing? Yeah, um, same yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> and a holiday maybe. A holiday, but Let's, once we've paid everything yeah, up. Yeah, once we. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boop 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 boop. I just done the poop. Daniel Spencer asked, "What has been your favourite digitised video this year? Either the Golden oh. Bean Christmas Special or the two part. Uh, no, I've got a few. Golden Bean Christmas Special, Snowmobile Bill, BTS video. Oh yeah." To name a bile BTS. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're getting his name wrong. He won't uh, be happy. I like both the Action Man ones. Yeah. Um, I liked the the live version of the Golden Bean, and the yeah. two UFO Supernatural World specials. Yeah. Yeah, you happy with yeah, those? Yeah, I I agree. Um, probably for me, the two absolute favourites would be Snowmobile BTS special and um, the UFO hunt in Rendlesham. Also, special shout out to any the, supernatural worlds. Yeah. I love all the supernatural worlds. To the ghost story video that we did with Paul and Eli. In, oh in yeah, the church. yes, that was fun. Partly because I had such a good night. That was yeah. <laughs> we had a really good I, night, and I think that the supernatural worlds are so close to my heart because they're just so much fun yeah they're just fun but they're I, fun to make I just loved hanging they're out so with Paul and they're so easy as well because it's just filmed on our phone but it's hanging like, out with Paul and Eli that night at the church yeah that was we were great very, I, well, I was very drunk and I wasn't so was Paul I wasn't so very was drunk Eli. yeah three of us were very drunk I was I was very going very slowly because I needed to be focused good, the next day it was a good night and a good location but it was we good fun we may have meant to do a whole big video there but mm-hmm. We were too knackered from being... Well, it was because we were stuck in traffic for four three hour. hours or four something. Hour. Like. No, it was four, four hours. Four hours, yeah. oh my goodness. So, yeah. It, yeah, plans changed. Well, goodbye then. I hope you've enjoyed my contributions to this episode. Next week's one will be more interesting, maybe. Blurgly flurgy dugly blurg biddle pool a bum. Right, we have talked for far too long. A long time. And we did have, have another you still video. you your voice? Yeah, we can keep going. Um... We'll be back next week with a more all singing, all dancing episode. Uh, I think it will be next week. I think these ones will be weekly. Okay. Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We're not going to promise anything, but we'll try. fingers crossed. So support us on Patreon if you fancy it. www.patreon.com slash Mr. Biffo. We offer loads of bonusy stuff. We're still talking about doing a slightly higher tier, but I don't know what to put on it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I kind of like the tears. They're so affordable. I know. It's but, like... But everyone keeps saying they're too affordable. Oh. Yeah, we, 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 you know, we're sort of... Yeah. Give, you know, doing ourselves out of... Uh, doing injustice. Mm. But just, I, I don't want to get rid of the tears we've got. Yeah. They're just another one that would perhaps offer something extra. But yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what either. Oh. Mm. Looking, at, looking at the cheap show ones, they do a higher tier. Anyway, not for on camera. So be back next week. Subscribe, like, all of that. Happy New Year again to everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Hope it's a good one. Fingers crossed. Let yeah. 2022 be fabulous for you and you and you and you and you. What she and said. You. And you. And me. <laughs> okay, bye.